Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the semifinals announcement for the MIT 100K and the Clean Energy Prize. Welcome. I'm John Casey, the Associate Director for this year's competition. And I'm Darren Nix. I'm the Director of the Business Line Contest. So in just a few minutes, we're going to start talking to Brad Feld. Who's Brad Feld? Seriously, you've been spending way too much time with Brad. Probably so. Brad Feld is the Managing Director of the Foundry Group, which is a VC firm in Boulder, Colorado. And they've invested in some companies you might actually have heard of, despite all your lab time. Try me. Uh, I don't think I have any more, but he makes this little gadget called Fitbit. Fitbit, all right. Yeah, which you like put on your belt, you run around, and it like tracks where you go and how much you sleep and that kind of thing. Awesome. You invested in Zingo, which I know you play farm belt. Of course. Yeah. With my mom. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I can't believe you just submitted that. And he also invested in Harmonix, which is a 100K company. Rock Band, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so he's kind of a badass. You do know what Rock Band is, right? Yes, of course I know what Rock Band is. Thank you, Darren. I'm not sure I believe you. So right. anyway, what, about, what else are we here to do tonight? All right, so we're talking about the business plan contest tonight. The, the MIT 100K has three phases right now. So we have the elevator pitch contest that was back in October. We had the executive summary contest that just finished a few weeks ago on February 10th. And then now we're into the business plan contest phase of the competition. Cool. Um, so, so how many entries did we have? 260. 260. It's a record. Damn. It's a record. All right, we're in good damn. shape. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, all right, so we'll, from out of those 260, we'll have five semifinalists for each of the five tracks in the 100K, and there will be similar to 25 semifinalists uh, in the Clean Energy Prize, and those will be announced by Jason Saloni in just a little bit. Um, so we have five semifinalists in each track, and then the next five in each track will be eligible for the wild card, and I forget how that works. What's, what's the deal with that, Darren? Pretty straightforward. So if you're in ranks 6 through 10, and you really want to make it into the finals, you have the chance to submit kind of an addendum to your executive summary, like okay. an extra five pages. Okay. They're going to rejudge any everybody who wants to re-enter. Awesome. The, you know, the 25 extras. And then they're going to pick two. Two. So we'll have a total of 27 finalists. And that's just for anybody who, you know, is kind of on the bubble. It's, you know, Great. The All right. Like so the, you know, the Big Ten or whatever. So don't give up hope. We've got 27 yeah, semifinalists. Awesome. Cute. Enough of us. Time for Brad Feld. Funding for student entrepreneurs would be impossible without the support of our generous sponsors. We would now like to recognize our platinum sponsors, Brown and Rudnick, and Morris Barnes Brown Pendleton. Brown Rudnick is a full-service international law firm. From offices in the United States and Europe, 200 attorneys practice across integrated areas of law and provide clients with a breadth and depth of expertise uniquely suited to their individual legal needs. Morris Barnes Brown and Pendleton focus exclusively on the core legal services that businesses need to succeed. The company is built on a unique business model that provides clients with access to highly experienced counsel in the areas of business and securities law, technology licensing and intellectual property, employment to immigration, and taxation. Hi, I'm, the, I'm Jeff Anderson. I'm the co-marketing lead for the 100K, and I'm sitting here with Brad Feld. Thank you very much for your time, Brad. My pleasure. And uh, I have a quick question here for you. So one of your investing themes is human-computer interaction. Can you talk to a little bit about why you see so much potential in this field? Sure. So uh, for us, HCI is built on the premise that the way we interact with computers 20 years from now will make the way that we interact with computers today uh, completely obsolete. And look as though the way we interacted with computers 20 or 30 years ago, which if you think about punch cards, ridiculous kind of construct today. If you ask somebody 15 years ago whether people would walk down the street and type on a piece of glass that was connected uh, to all the information that they don't want to be connected at, they look at you kind of funny. Like that, that wouldn't make sense. And in fact, the way that we think about computers 20 years from now, in a lot of ways, is very hard to understand how to think about it. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer that the machines have already taken over, and they're convincing us to put all of human information into them. And they're actually uh, so lazy that they're letting us do all the work to help program them to put the information into them the way they want. But if you sort of extrapolate that out and think about the sort of serious idea of the curves that we're dealing with in terms of computing and the way that we as humans interact with what we think of as computer technology, the idea that over the next 20 years it's going to rapidly change and rapidly accelerate is really front of mind. Thank you. Uh, also, so the 100K is filled with a number of aspiring entrepreneurs. Can you talk a little bit about the most common uh, issues and, uh, and misconceptions that, that, uh, that entrepreneurs have when dealing with VCs? Yeah, there's probably a lot of them. I think that um, for starters, there, the notion that, a, that VC as a category is the same, that AVC is a generic thing, um, is, is not valid, right? 
every VC is different. Every venture firm has its own characteristics. There are actually different strategies and different ways that individuals uh, interact with entrepreneurs. And one of the most important things for an entrepreneur to do is really understand the types of the types of people in the firm and what their characteristics are and how the people in the firm behaves. Um, there's a lot of movement, so some venture firms and some venture capitalists have very clearly defined long-term strategies. They have a way that they're going to be functioning over a period of time. Others are very chaotic. Many venture firms have a playbook that they've been executing for a number of years that you know, moves around a little bit, but it looks a certain way. Others, you know, whatever the sort of newest trendy thing they're chasing after. So for an entrepreneur, thinking that a venture capitalist is a generic thing and that all venture capitalists are the same, very different. The, the next thing I'd say is, like any business partnership, um, an entrepreneur should know what they're getting. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs are not nearly aggressive enough about trying to figure out what's behind the venture capitalist, what the reputation of the venture capital is. It's remarkable to me the number of times that entrepreneurs don't do a lot of work to explore the venture capitalist background and what it's going to be. And it's so easy today, not just because the information is so readily available, but the information about who the venture capitalists have invested in and your ability to have access to them as an entrepreneur is so easy. So I think sort of in, in that vein, really taking advantage of the amount of information uh, that exists is important. The last is recognize that uh, the pressures and the dynamics within a venture capital firm vary dramatically based on the performance of the firm, the tenure of the people, people's personal dynamics. They're generally small uh, organizations. Even you know, funds that have a lot of capital under management are still relatively small organizations. So there's a lot of dynamics inside the organizations that, that 15, 20 years ago were very difficult to understand. Today are relatively easy to figure out just by talking to people. And taking advantage of that knowledge in the context of being an entrepreneur actually helps you as an entrepreneur raise money, understand which VCs are going to be good for you, understand who's going to deal with what kinds of issues, especially when there's stress, and really calibrate what the venture capitalist says they're going to do or can do with what they actually do in practice. Okay. So uh, you've been involved with 100K for a number of years. You were a judge for... A 10K, I was oh, okay. 100K. You guys have all this money now. Oh, that was a long time ago. I, I, you know, it wasn't the 1K, but it was the 10K. So uh, can you talk a little bit about your favorite 100K or 10K companies and uh, your favorite 100K or 10K com uh, moments? Sure. Um, I, was, uh, I was a judge uh, when I was here and lived in Boston until about the time that I left Boston. So for five or six years, I was involved in the 90s. Um, and not only was I a judge, but I, I was actively investing as an angel investor between 94 and 96. And I invested in a number of the companies that went through the program, including some that ended up being very successful. So I was an investor in uh, NetGenesis was in one year. Uh, Harmonix was in one year, which are the guys that did uh, Guitar Hero and Rock Band. And I think they didn't even get past the first round. Um, I was an investor in a company called Thinkfish that uh, I went through the program. Um, I, of course, stopped investing or stopped being a judge uh, the year before Akamai went through the program, so of course my timing there was impeccable. Um, uh, I had a great time with it. The, 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 when, I, when I was involved at the very beginning of it, um, I would say the people didn't really know what entrepreneurship meant. Like That wasn't a term in the early 1990s, and the idea of uh, a competition around starting up a business and going from that very beginning concept through you know, presentation of where you're going um, was incredibly powerful. And um, I have long believed that it's really critical uh, at a place like MIT to take advantage of the natural resources of MIT, which is the cross-campus activity, right? MIT has, it, best in the world in my opinion, many of the, the science and te technological disciplines. I think it's the greatest place in the world in terms of the type of intellect that comes out of MIT, um, uh, both at an undergraduate and graduate level. And it's got an outstanding business school. And linking those pieces together, the core innovators, the core technologists, and the business people, and seeing the magic that happens when you get them together in a concentrated period of time with a clear goal is really, really powerful. Um, so I, I've always been an enormous fan of the program. It's been very fun to watch it grow over the years and evolve. Because it's not static, right? It's not the idea that you know you have this certain drill and you execute this very static sort of thing and you start and at the end you deliver a business plan and people judge you based on the business plan, right? It's a very dynamic thing. You actually look at the companies coming out of the program and there's a remarkable number of real companies that got formed by people that connected together while they were in this process. 
and actually went and did stuff. And I, I think that's just awesome. Brad, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. So where does all this money come from, Darren? What money? The money that we give to the students. Oh, you mean like the $100,000 top prize and $25,000 for all the tracks and that kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. Sponsors. Sponsors. All right. So, so who are our sponsors, Darren? Well, we have, first one, for example, a gold sponsor is Mint Living. They're a law firm that helps startups launch, protect their intellectual property, raise capital, recruit talent, and resolve disputes. Okay. All right. Awesome. We also have Northbridge, which focuses on seed and venture growth equity strategies to turn ideas into companies. We also have another venture capital firm, um, Polaris Venture Partners. They invest in seed, early stage, middle market companies in high growth industries. Awesome. All right. So what's the first track that we're going to announce the semifinalists for? All right. We're going to start with emerging markets. Cool. All right. So get ready, guys. The five semifinalists for emerging markets are Sadi, Nuvo, Evolving Technology, Waste to Watts, and Mobex. Congratulations, guys. All right, we'd like to thank Wilmer Hale as well. So they're a, a law firm that offers unparalleled legal representation uh, for a range of practice ideas. We also have Goodwin Proctor. They're a hard-driving, entrepreneurial, and dynamic law firm who work tenaciously for their clients, and they treat their clients' problems as their own. Well, that's good to hear. All right, we'd like to thank Wolf Greenfield. Uh, so these, these guys are awesome. Their practice is solely focused on intellectual property law. Um, they actually represent some Nobel Prize winners, so they've done a really great job. And lastly, we have KPMG. You might have heard of them. They operate as an international network that has 137,000 employees doing audit, tax, and advisory services in 144 countries. I agree. And the next track is WebIT. All right. So WebIT semifinalists are Upcast. I love this one. All cows eat grass. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, guys. Uh, Convexic. Receipts on demand. And Visualize Me. Congratulations. So now we have the products and services track. All right, so products and services semifinalists are Barter Info Markets. Green Logistics. Hydrodynamical Milk. I Helmet. I Helmet, awesome, and Pointeria. Congratulations. Congrats, guys. So one of our newest sponsors is NEA. You've probably heard of them. They're enormous. They have $11 billion in capital under management. They've invested in 650 companies, and they've had 165 IPOs. Awesome. All right. We're actually also a little bit international. So uh, India-based Reliance Technology Ventures is one of our great partners. Um, so they're a, a top-class, world-class uh, venture capital firm. Very cool. And Hanover Insurance has just become a sponsor. They've been providing auto, home, and business insurance since 1852. So we're international and ancient. That's awesome. Thank you, Hanover. All right, and so the next uh, the next track up is mobile. Um, so mobile track is actually sponsored by Qualcomm. Um, so thanks a bunch, guys. They manufacture chipsets and license technology. Um, a lot of great stuff. So thanks to Qualcomm. Um, and our semifinalists are Excel Lingo, Depth Sensing LCD, Safer Taxi, Juntos Finanzas, and I Hear. Good job, guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. So now we have the Life Sciences track, last but not least. Awesome. Yep. So we'd like to thank our sponsors for the Life Sciences track. We've got a couple. Um, so thank you very much to Faber, Dolphin, Rosenberg. Um, so they provide corporate and transactional counsel uh, exclusively to Life Sciences companies. Excellent. And the second one is the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center. Yep. And they were established by the state of Massachusetts to invest in life sciences research and economic development. Thank you very much, guys. We couldn't do it without you. Um, and so now the semifinalists for the Life Sciences track, um, and they are Zanara. Solanix, Boss, Sexton, and Transcendent. Congratulations, guys. Great job. Well done. Congratulations to all the 100K semifinalists. Have an awesome time between now and the end of the competition. Plenty of all-nighters in front of you. Crush it. Uh, hello, I'm Jason Saloni. I'm a 2011 MBA here at MIT and one of the managing directors of the 2011 MIT Clean Energy Prize. Hello, I'm Georgina Campbell. I am a technology and policy student here at MIT and the other managing director of the Clean Energy Prize. So the Clean Energy Prize received 80 business plan submissions uh, representing 47 U.S. universities. Uh, not only is this a great number of entries, but it's also uh, the entries, as remarked on by our judges, were excellent. The quality was, in general, very high. So thank you 
not only to the 25 semifinalists who we'll announce here tonight, but also to the every team who submitted. Thank you very much. Um, the semifinalists that we announced here were chosen by a group of professional judges uh, last night. There are 25 teams spread over five categories, and those 25 teams between now and May 3rd will be given industry mentors, legal mentors, and another two months to round out their business plans and then present them at our uh, category finals event, our showcase on May 3rd. This takes place, uh, as I said, on May 3rd at the Heinz Convention Center in Boston. Uh, not only will the teams be presenting and we'll have some uh, real nice events, but the uh, keynote address will be given by Jeff Immelt, the CEO of General Electric. All right, well with that, let's get started and uh, get to what you've all been tuning in for, the announcement of the 25 semifinalists. Uh, we'll start with transportation. The five teams in alphabetical order are BioGreen, General Cryogenic, Modride, Righteous Wheels, and Thermal Conversion Technologies. For deployment, we have Access Wind, Ampcast, Green Glove Energy Efficiency, Link Cycle, and Sulico. For the clean non renewables category, we have C5 Bio, Greenbrook, iShine, PK Clean, and Transatomic Power. For energy efficiency and infrastructure, we have Arctic Sand, Cool Chip Technologies, POW Solutions, Smarter Shade, and Thameleon. And finally, in the renewables category, we have FMAX Solar, New Power Energy Systems, S2E Solar, Ubiquitous Energy, and Zolar Chiller. And finally, uh, we'd like to do two things. First, we'd like to congratulate not only the 25 semifinalists, but all the teams who entered the competition. And second, we'd like to thank a few groups. Uh, first, our judges, not only in the semifinal round, but also the judges to come in the finals and the grand prize. This competition certainly wouldn't be what it is without you. Uh, second, our group of mentors. Uh, our organizing team, who does an amazing amount of work uh, completely for free. And finally, our generous sponsors, NSTAR, the U.S. Department of Energy, EDP, General Motors, Chevron, and MIT Executive Education. Thank you to all of those organizations. And with that, I think we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. So thank you very much, and have a nice night. So we're getting close to the end here, but before we go, I wanted to thank our in-kind sponsors. We have the Cambridge Innovation Center. And we also have version 2 communications. Well, thank you very much, guys. And we actually would like to announce that we have a brand new prize, the Link Data Prize, which will be sponsored by Thomson Reuters. Um, so that'll be part of the business plan contest going forward. You can go to our website for more information on that. Um, and in conclusion, guys, the, the biggest part of the year, May 11th, uh, will be the grand finale. So mark your calendars. We will see you all there. We have Kresge reserved. Kresge. 100 people. We're going to pack it out. Kresge. Yeah, get there early, guys.